is unseasonably warm in Columbia, South Carolina. Temperatures in the 70s. And the Kentucky Wildcats heating up as they try to improve to 4-0 in conference play. The Gamecocks looking for their first conference win of the year. And we welcome you inside the Colonial Life Arena. Mike Morgan with John Sunbold. And John, same old story for Kentucky, right? You lose a couple of games early with a lot of young players, and then all of a sudden the new year starts and this Kentucky team playing much better ball. Uh, same song, different year, right? Mm -hmm. and they're getting better, and they're getting a better couple areas. They're handling the ball, good assists, rebounding the basketball. Their defense is better. And let's be honest, they are shooting the heck out of it. Emmanuel quickly in particular has been red hot from behind the arc, but really, all the guards for Kentucky have been playing outstanding. And how about a career year for Nick Richards inside? You know, you mentioned uh, quickly doing great. Maxie's playing solid. Richards had a massive game against Missouri in their home win. 21 points, 12 rebounds. And it was uh, a start of something that Coach Cal said, uh, maybe we get that night in, night out. But what he has gotten is solid besides the defensive end is guys making jump shots. The three-point balls are going in quickly has made 10 of his last 11 threes, and he's been on fire. Speaking of a guy who has stepped up his play and now his senior campaign, Mike Coatsar for South Carolina. Where would this team be without the play out of this young man? You see what he's done in conference play, 17 and a half points, nine rebounds per game. Yeah, 18 in the loss against Florida, and then 17 Saturday when they were at Tennessee, 7-11 from the field. He also had eight rebounds. He is a focal point defensively for Kentucky. When we watch shoot around, they didn't want Coatsar to get open for shots, and they want to keep A.J. Lawson, the sophomore for South Carolina, a preseason all-SEC type pick, keep him in somewhat of a funk. He's not played well so far as conference play. Weird things happen when these two teams meet. Coach Calipari has been ejected twice in this building during his time at Kentucky. South Carolina two years ago was a pretty average team. They wound up winning against Kentucky in this building. We'll see if some rather strange things happen tonight. Well, we know when Kentucky shows up, so does uh, the home student body, right? They are out in full force. School was back in session on Monday. And, and South Carolina has lost three games in a row. They've not played well in the offensive end, but defensively, they've been good night in, night out. And they already forced a turnover and a foul on Kentucky. Foul will go against Keon Brooks. A very spirited shoot around for the Gamecocks this afternoon. And what they're trying to do is get on track and Jermaine Kusnard with the basketball in the starting lineup, replacing Jer Bolden. They want some energy, activity. They gotta find something offensively. Kusnard was a bright spot in that tough loss at Tennessee a few days ago. Here's Kusnard on the take, the kick out pass. Bryant unloads a three. Bryant, not a, not a great three point shooter. For that matter, neither is this Gamecock team at 28% and a quick bucket on the other end for Richards. Well, the way Richard runs the floor, you better get back defensively. And then a rejection. Brooks takes some of the air out of the pumpkin on that swat. Kentucky's good. They're long defensively. They rebound like they'd have every year. They'll guard the rim, but when they get the ball, they can run all five guys. Gamecocks have really been struggling offensively. Let's see if they can get something going here early on. Coatsar, double team, kick out pass, Lawson on a three. Quick double by uh, Hagens, win the ball, went on the floor by Coatsar. Lawson has not shot the ball particularly well of late. Montgomery off the mark, slithering in for the rebound is Kentucky, and then a jump ball, Coatsar and Richards. Coach Calipari now in his 11th season, four Final Fours. You see he's reached the Elite Eight or better seven times in those 11 seasons. And he's been very patient with this team, the team that does not necessarily have a go-to guy, but overall the guards have picked it up. A little bit of an unusual team for Kentucky. It's not just all freshmen. Many times we're sitting here year after right. year, they've got five or six freshmen. Hagens is a sophomore. Obviously Richards is a junior. Montgomery is a sophomore. So when they put the lineup on the floor, it's just not a bunch of freshmen. Now, what he said this afternoon, can we handle the physical play that South Carolina likes right. to play? Bryant, happy feet, turnover, back to Kentucky. 
Coach Calipari, you know, when you look at it, uh, he's always got one of the youngest teams, but you hit on the key spot. They're not all freshmen. He does have some guys that played quality minutes and even started last year. You go back to that one national championship team, everybody remembers, of course, Kid Gilchrist and one Anthony Davis, but they had Deron Lamb, Terrence Jones, Darius Miller. They had veterans. This team has some veterans. Veteran players win championships, and, and, and the way Kentucky has played in the last couple weeks, it's an emergence. You see the four-game winning streak. You see the points now in the SEC, number one in the league in free throw shooting. And they get to the line a bunch. They have made more free throws than their opponents have shot. That'll be a key number to look for as Richards picks up a rejection. Anytime as a player you play against a Kentucky team, a well-coached team, and you try to penetrate one side, you know help side defense is coming. Mm -hmm. You've got to put it in your mind to know where did that guy come from, what position, where do I swing the ball when I have that opportunity. Hagens caught on the hold. Ashton Hagens, one of the top on-ball defenders in this league, if not the country. In fact, Coach Cal was telling us today, Emmanuel Quickly, who we'll see later coming off the bench, he might be just as good, if not better, pure defensively. Yeah, on the ball. On the ball. Yeah. Now a reach-in foul on Maxi. Got to move your feet, especially out front. If you're a guard and you give the official an opportunity to blow the whistle when you're active with your hands, they'll usually blow it. Already Kentucky with three fouls in less than two minutes of action. Kusnard finds Lawson up top. Lawson, little Euro step, lost the handle. I think Hagen's got the strip. Hagen's, Maxi, teardrop, good. Active hands by Hagen's knocked out away. And again, when the ball's loose and Kentucky gets up, it's a dead sprint to the other end. So quick are their guards. Kusnard takes it strong, might have been blocked, definitely altered. Shake and bake. Mm. Montgomery trying to find Richards down low and a hold on Coatsar. We talked about Coach Cal. How about Frank Martin now in his eighth year? Of course, the final four a few years ago, but this is a team that had some high expectations. I think a lot of people thought with Lawson coming back and Coatsar and Frank has said this was his deepest team. He thought it would be his best shooting team, and that's been the biggest disappointment. They have not shot the ball well. Yeah, and those lead to losses, right? They, they, they shot it well at Virginia, and you, so you knock off Virginia. But then you lose it home to Stetson. You have a chance to beat Florida, but you don't score enough. The dry spell, and then the dry spell at Tennessee, you lose a game that's winnable. Coatsar, who actually leads the team in steals, picks up a pilfer there. Now, you mentioned the win at Virginia. They beat Clemson on the road, same yeah. Clemson team that's beaten Duke and North Carolina. But then some disappointing losses. Stetson, and they had Tennessee, certainly a winnable game in Knoxville a few days ago. They can't pull it off. They had Florida at home. They can't pull that off. Florida at home, 13 straight possessions. The Gamecocks don't score in the second half. At Tennessee, they hold Tennessee to 26% shooting. But in the second half, 19 straight possessions. Gamecocks didn't score. That's, that's an incredible number as Whitney weaves in. Tapped up no. Ball up Richards, and he's hacked and fouled. And Nick Richards will go to the free throw line. Nick Richards, you talk to people around this Kentucky program, he finally now is a difference maker. He's been a role player for most of his time in Lexington, but now he's making a difference on both ends of the floor. 67% from the field, which is fifth in the country. 29th in block shots. Eighth in rebound in the SEC. Offensive rebound, defensive rebound. Doing the things, playing big when uh, moments are needed. That last foul, by the way, was on Mike Coatsar. That is his second. And if you've followed this team at all, that is the glue, the energy, everything for this Gamecock team. Without him on the floor now, probably for significant minutes first half, that's a huge loss. Well, it puts pressure on A.J. Lawson. And I mentioned Lawson struggling the last few ball games. He was on the all-freshman team a year ago. Started, played well so far this season, but has only scored 16 points in the three SEC games. That's total points. Three of 22 from the field has really struggled. He's not lived up to the first team preseason all SEC that was voted on by the coaches. Meanwhile, Carolina 0 for 6 from the field, and now another turnover. And there you see Lawson 
I mean, he was a very promising freshman a year ago. This year expected to do a whole lot more. Yeah, the numbers aren't awful, yeah. but but Frank wants him to become the alpha dog on this team, and that has not happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Now he is a sophomore. It might not be in his mentality to be the alpha dog, but you'd still be a good player. You can still lead your team, and at times you may have to force yourself to step up. Quickly whistled for the offensive foul. Mike, here's the tough part about South Carolina. They're at home. They've got a crowd that's ready to explode. Right. But you got to score first. You've got to give them some buckets. You, you're giving, you got good defensive stops, much like they did at Tennessee. Right. Got to get something going on the offensive end. Which player steps up? Now, it's not an easy team to score against. Kentucky locks you down. Their guards are terrific. Big guys are active around the rim. Ball comes inside. A whistle going against Kentucky. It came down to Levesque, who's a 6'11 freshman out of Brockton, Massachusetts. They've got high hopes for him. Frank Martin very high on him. He's cousin of one Nerlens Noel, the former Kentucky Wildcat. Pretty good player now with the Thunder from Oklahoma City. Inside. And it'll stay Gamecock basketball with 16 on the shot clock. Kentucky today defensively said, let's make South Carolina run offense, and if we can stay with them and not let them get some early looks in their offense, at times they force and take some bad shots. Lawson, pounded by quickly, throws up a prayer, tapped around and finally cleared by Sestina. Again, that's a difficult shot for A.J. Lawson. Whitney into the game for Kentucky. Extremely athletic and explosive freshman out of Chicago. Maxi alley pass, or maybe that was a shot. I don't know, but either way, it's two points. You know, he looked one way like he was going to pass it. <laughs> looked like a lob, but uh, perfect. Backdoor cut, Lawson, and he's hammered. Whitney on a reach in. Oh, free throws upcoming for the Gamecocks. Kentucky, 8 nothing. <laughs> SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Cocky in the crowd trying to find something to get excited about here. Gamecocks... Off to an 0 for 7 start from the field. Kentucky has committed six fouls, so kind of a mixed bag of results here for both squads. Typically when Kentucky comes here, and Coach Cal was up front about this, it, it becomes a battle of wills, a very physical game. Sometimes Gamecocks muck it up a little bit, and Cal said, you know, we have to be able to match that and not lose our composure. And he made, it, he, he made it sound like it was good for his team, yeah. right, to go through a battle when you've got a physical team that likes to muscle, tough you, hold you. Uh, he thinks in the long run that's what you need at times. Gamecock's best free throw shooter is at the line, A.J. Lawson, a sophomore from Toronto, Canada, who played some of his high school ball with one Andrew Nemhard of the Florida Gators, a couple of Canadians playing guard in the SEC. Nemhard and his Florida Gators off to a good start. Three and one in the league. One in this building. Lost last Saturday at Missouri, which was kind of a surprise. Yeah. But Missouri put 91 on them. And then Missouri gets blown out by Mississippi State. So try to apply logic to that. I think we're going to see a, a lot of those, not types of scores, but games in the league. Teams uh, are not as consistent this year in the middle of the pack, but they're all, they can all beat each other. Kentucky, one of three undefeated teams left in the SEC. Auburn and LSU, the other two. Lawson around the screen. And Goes. LSU had a scare last night, had to come from behind to get to overtime, and then won against a and in overtime. Bryant, high off the window. No dice, Richards rips down the rebound. And that's what Bryant does best. Left-handed, goes to his left, and can finish around the rim. Maxi, and a hold on Kusnar. There's the updated standings right now. I mentioned the three undefeated at the top. Florida, certainly one of the better teams, more talented teams. They're also very young, too, with some of the freshmen they're relying on. I think the surprise of the best story of the year has been Arkansas. 
our Arkansas is a type of team that they shoot the heck out of the ball, right? Uh, Coach Musselman will put five guards in. They will shoot lights out. They have not yet been challenged rebounding wise, but uh, they are a team that can score it. Mm -hmm. And they're comfortable at coming from behind. At, at they got guys that can, Isaiah Joe, they, they got guys that can just make huge shots for them. They have launched the third, third most amount of threes in the league. Alabama, by far the most three-point attempts, 440. To put that in perspective, mm. Kentucky has only attempted 234, nearly half that amount. Manaya on a three. They really would love to see Manaya get going. It's been a tough start to the year. And Alabama leads this league in scoring. 83 points a ball game. Everybody would think it was Auburn. Auburn's number two. Out of bounds to Kentucky. Higgins leading the SEC in assists. And if you're Kentucky, don't play with South Carolina. Just because they're struggling, you don't have to struggle yourself offensively. Get more movement, get some things going. You should be able to build a 16, 18 point lead if the Gamecocks can't score. Well, that's already six turnovers yeah. on Kentucky and back to back traveling violations on Sestina, who overall has been a gem for them, the transfer from Bucknell. 24 minutes of ball game, solid on both ends of the floor. Gamecocks still looking for their first field goal. 0 for 9 from the field. Make it 0 for 10. Oh! But how about number 11? Top floor on the slam is Keyshawn Bryant. Hmm. Now the crowd has something to cheer about. And then a foul on the other end, Hagens. One of the best athletes in the SEC is Keyshawn Bryant. And it must put a body on him. If not, that's what happens. Might be the best offensive play they've run all night. Throw it up, go chase. Powerful finish. He's Sean Bryant, one of the top leapers in the SEC. Six foot five and a whole lot of hops. Richards got hit in the head. Late whistle from Pat Adams, but Nick Richards will go to the line. A good entry pass by Hagens. Came off the screen. A lot of times the angles aren't easy to find your big man that are on the move. Put it in a good spot for Richards to catch. So Nick Richards, junior forward from Kinston, Jamaica. And you see what Kentucky has done this year at the free throw line. 78% one of the top numbers in America. They make more than opponents take. And when you can do that, it's a staple of Bobby Knight's old teams in Indiana. When you can do that, you're going to win a lot of games. It, it says a lot to uh, not only offensively, but your defense, right? They don't foul a lot. They guard the rim extremely well because of their length. In this day and age where so many teams are three ball crazy, Coach Cal Tano, he said, you know, I only want to take between 17, 20 a game. He said, going back to my days at Memphis, UMass, when I hit 30, we lose. So he doesn't want to take that many. He's got a couple teams in this league we've already talked about, though, that will shoot him. Absolutely. Of course, the line back this year to the international mark, 22 well, feet. And it's often been talked about that it doesn't bother good shooters, but it has made average shooters worse than average, and it's made bad shooters really bad. Hagens picking up the loose change, takes it all the way. No, Richards, yes. Two Carolina players back on the defensive end. Both went for the shot block. Seven points already for Richards. Kusnard, offensive rebound, lost it, fall up, no. I think that was out of bounds. Bryant just throws it up there and gets a friendly bounce. I think it hit the frame behind the backboard. I think you're right. But that is not something that's reviewable. Brooks on a three. One extra pass, and, and watch how quickly that the Gamecocks get to quickly. They won't let him shoot the ball. In a break zone here in the first half, five-point game, and a whistle down low. It'll be Gamecock basketball when we come back. Kentucky up by five.
catches some strange things happen. We, these two teams meet in Columbia two years ago, January the 16th. Chris Silva now enjoying life with the Miami Heat. Tied his career high with 27 points. The Gamecocks rallying from 14 points down in the second half. And the Gamecocks would wind up winning at 76 to 68. That was a Gamecock team that finished just one game above, above 500, 17 and 16 overall. Kentucky would go to the Sweet 16 that year before losing to Kansas State. But again, the Gamecocks have pulled off some upsets over very talented Kentucky teams in this building in the past. Well, good to see uh, you mentioned Chris Silva. He just signed a new three-year deal with the Miami Heat, which is good to see. We saw his growth as a player here at oh, South yeah. Carolina. Year uh, in, year out, kept getting better. Uh, now, he's a, now he's a signed three-year guaranteed deal with the Heat. Mom got to travel overseas and finally get to see her son play with the Miami Heat the other day. It was kind of an emotional YouTube video moment for Chris Silva, who was just the embodiment of a guy who was somewhat of a project when he came in and turned into a heck of an all-SEC player and now NBA player. Who on this roster for Frank Martin has that potential right now? Mike Kotsar has been the best and most consistent player, but he's been saddled on the bench with two early fouls. There's your two scores. Maybe three scores. Manaya sitting right next to Lawson at Kotsar. So a younger team out for Frank Martin. How do they score? Where do they find buckets? Good question. We'll see if they have the answer at least at the free throw line with the freshman Wolvec. Cannot connect. And a one and one is an empty trip. Kentucky up by five with a basketball. Wildcats with six turnovers early in this first half. Higgins kick out pass quickly has been on fire from downtown. He has now hit 11 of his last 12 threes. And confident. After last ball game, he just said, hey, I'm on fire. I think I'll make them all. McCrary with an answer on the other end. Already Hagens with three assists. He averages over a seven a game. That's number one in the SEC, and he drops another dime off there. Richards on the receiving end. He has nine. Hagens running the point exactly how you want to run the point. High screen and roll. First time he took it down the lane, found quickly in the corner. That time got the roll man for the easy dunk. Now there are a few players that can affect the game in such a way without even scoring a point. You know you got the defense with Hagens, and he's going to lead the league in assists this year as Lovec shows a little mid-range jumper. Yeah, let's go back to Hagens. Nearly a triple-double last game out. Confidence building on the offensive side. We know he's a great defensive player. Everybody talks about it. Honored as co-defensive player of the year last year with, with Tremont Waters. But offensively, now becoming confident. Not only shooting the ball, but distributing the teammates. That's going to be offensive on Richards. Lower the shoulder. And then plowed over the defender. Richards, second foul. First time through. Look at the defense. One, two, three, four Gamecocks. Go after Hagen, so an easy pass and a bucket for quickly this time. Surveys, sees what he has. Richards rolls right to the rim. Hagen's this year, I mean, he's been playing chess when a lot of defenses have been playing checkers. Well, and when you have a guy that can play the pace he wants to play, they're not rushing it, right? He's doing what he wants to do. Really has grown up as a sophomore now. Kusnard from distance. Offensive rebound, great hustle on the play by McCrary. We see Ashton Hagens. We know about the defense. That was great as a freshman, but now it's his offense that has scouts looking at him as a potential first round draft pick. Another one of those guys, every time you watch Kentucky play, it just seems he has more confidence in A, first what the coaches want, and then B, what he can do and how he can get his teammates involved. If he's got to involve himself, he will. Jalen McCreary, freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Gamecocks 
woeful at the free throw line this year, 61%. Yeah, they are last, Kentucky is first. Curry got in eight minutes at Tennessee. He's playing a few minutes a game. Oh, wow. Hagens behind the back, but <laughs> that touch out of behind bounds. the back. Yep. What Kentucky wanted on one end, they get a call against him, but man, he made a move, but he lost control. Mm -hmm. hmm. Another turnover. And you get the feeling this game is going to have to be a little bit on the ugly side if Carolina's going to win it, don't you? Uh, yeah, that's kind of a MO for Carolina. Yeah. And they'll do that to you. Defensively, Frank Martin's team's always good, physical, tough. Kusnard has it blocked out of bounds. But the Wildcats have responded with a little bit of toughness on their defensive end. Yeah. When you think of what Frank's team did in that Tennessee game. You hold Tennessee to 26% from the field and you force 19 turnovers, you're going to win a game 99% of the time. But that did not happen as they changed the call. Now it'll be Kentucky ball. Think about that. 26 from the field, you force 19 turnovers and you lose by a point. And they had a, I'm not going to say they had a comfortable lead in the second half, but they were up eight. Just couldn't find ways to get a bucket. And then had possession of the ball down the stretch. Right. Last play of the game was a charge on Lawson. Didn't get a shot at him. Quickly on a blow by. And Good then Kusnard anticipated the pass, stole it, but he stepped out of bounds. Good weak side defense. Kusnard, Kusnard came from the top, made the interception, but stepped out of bounds. So the next time quickly goes baseline, he's going to know where the rotation came from. He's probably going to find the guy up top that will be open from the rotation. Quickly, rocker step, now pulls up deep three on the way. Emmanuel quickly is in an absolute zone. Automatic. Keep getting it to him. 12 of his last 13 threes. Manaya swings it into the corner. Lawson on a three. Mike, I think Manaya's got to be more of an offensive presence. Yeah. Obviously injured a year ago, had a terrific freshman season. He got to redshirt last year, but he, he's got the game and the ability to be better on the offensive end. Wildcats up by nine, eight and a half to play first half. Interchangeable parts up top. Maxie, Hagens, or even quickly can handle the basketball. Time Hagens left the three short. Moss all the way. Hancock's just four for 22 from the field. Montgomery pulls up. And a battle for the rebound. Foul on the floor. We'll clean that up when we come back. Kentucky up by nine. Do not leave Emmanuel quickly alone. He has ignited, and the Wildcats enjoying a nine-point lead. Mike Morgan, John Sunvold, back with you in Columbia. John, we can break down a lot of different facets of the game, but when you're shooting 19%, it's just doggone hard to win. You're lucky you're down nine. I mean, let's be honest. 19%. Now, things you want to do offensively, you've got to run your stuff, try to, you know, get guys shots. Can you get early buckets? Can you get easy buckets, yeah. usually against Kentucky? The answer is no. They get back defensively. And, and two areas, Kentucky's really good. Out front against the ball and around the rim. So you, you try to beat guys off the dribble. On the offensive end, I would think – you might as well try to find quickly, early and often. He is so hot right now. I mean, the best thing for South Carolina is the fact Emmanuel Quickly's only got three shot attempts. He's two for two beyond the three-point line. And if I'm quickly, I'm mentioning to my teammates. Uh, <clears throat> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. I haven't missed a three for a long time. Twelve out of his last thirteen. It's insane. That insane. is an insane number. That and remember, early in this season. Many wondered, could Kentucky shoot the long ball right. well enough? 
Sistina says, I can hit. That's going to be a deep two just on the line. And out of all the people, Coach Cal was the most confident in that he trusted his guys that will make shots. Yep. That's one thing about Coach Cal. He doesn't get on his guys for missing shots as Cousinard has an answer with a three on the other end. Good stroke there. Cousinard is a guy that Frank Martin believes is going to become a very good shooter in time. Sestina has one rattle out. How quickly Kentucky gets back on defense. All five guys in blue. Not many open opportunities, but two in a row. Cousinard. Now you know why he got the start tonight. Redshirt freshman, he's not bashful. And Frank Martin is looking for some leadership from the lead guard position. Remember, it was Kusnard who missed that Florida game with a back strain. Matchup 2-3 zone defense handled easily, especially by Hagen's terrific pass. Another assist. Another assist for Ashton Hagen's, who is just dissecting this Carolina defense. Well, we said the Gamecocks are looking for something offensively. Jermaine Kusnard hit one, the previous possession, now two in a row. Maybe that gets him going. Maybe to adjust the defense a little bit, they'll have to guard him. On the offensive end, Kentucky's been able to just dissect anything. First it was against man-to-man, -man, that time against the zone. Hagens went right inside. Easy bucket, easy three-point play. Didn't finish it. Sestina. A rare miss for Kentucky at the free throw line. They come in number one and the SEC at 78%. Lawson finds Bryant on a three. That might be a little out of his range. Well, it's not his strength. If you're Bryant, you put it on the floor, try to use your athletic ability, go over the top of people when you get to the lane. Bryant now one for 11 from downtown. On Tuesday, Mike White in Florida travel to Baton Rouge to take on Will Wade's LSU Tigers. That's at 7 Eastern. Right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Florida now 3-1 in SEC play. LSU remaining undefeated at 4-0. Should be a good matchup between the Gators and the Bayou Bengals. LSU, an athletic team that will flat out rebound the basketball in the offensive end. And Florida solid defensively. Mixture of young and some veteran players. Yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my arms around what Florida is this year. You know, you and I had them earlier yeah. in the year, and Mike White was visibly frustrated and talked to us about some of the things that was certainly concerning him, but you know that they had the ability. So you have the leadership of Blackshears who transferred, right, mm -hmm. and has been solid. You have three sophomores that everybody would expect because they played so much as freshmen that will automatically then they take the next step. It's not, they're still sophomores. Right. They're still young. And they play a lot of freshmen, so Knights doesn't quite go as like you'd like it on the road, tougher, like when they played at Missouri. Defensively, they weren't very good, had no answers for the Tigers. So they'll have some inconsistencies, but as the year goes on, I think Florida's going to be one of those teams at the end that's got a chance. Yeah, especially when those freshmen continue to grow under Mike White's tutelage. We near the six-minute mark. Kusnard finally misses one. Tough rebound in traffic by Whitney. Whitney trying to earn some minutes off the bench. Cal was funny today. He says, you know, I got Whitney who wants to play more. Brooks wants to play more. He says, I got three good guards that if you ask them, they want to play all 40, 40 minutes every game, <laughs> including one Tyrese Maxey who hit the jumper. Maxey with a soft touch. Yeah, those guys don't want to come out. No. They sure as heck don't get tired. Backdoor cut. Kusnard missed it. Cal simply said to his young guys, hey, you got to earn your minutes. Yep. Welcome to Kentucky. Sestina, alley you oh, pass, man. and the slam is missed. It's going to be a technical. It was missed by Maxi. Nice pass. It'll be a technical foul. Missed, and then he hung on. He was frustrated. Maybe didn't quite get a hold of it and hung around for a while. If he does it for safety reasons, well, they usually don't call a technical. You had a, a Gamecock player underneath the basket, but they are I indeed going to call I think the initial response tech. was he hung quick because he missed it. Like right. he was, and obviously Cal just said, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't think Cal agrees with the call. He's been ejected twice 
in this building. So four technical <laughs> fouls already for Coach Cal Perry here at the uh, Colonial Life Arena. So watch the initial reaction on the miss. So he's got it. I mean, you got Frank right underneath. Yeah. Could he have let go earlier? Maybe not. Judgment call, as the officials would say. Meanwhile, 10 point advantage for Kentucky. Gamecock basketball. Alonzo Frank in the game for the Gamecocks. He got a DNP against Tennessee. Trying to earn some minutes here. That won't do it. Knuckleball thrown up there by McCrary. Offensive rebound. That will do it. Alonzo Frank trying to earn some playing time and picks up an offensive rebound. Foul on EJ Montgomery. And Frank will go to the free throw line where he's 52% on the year. Out of Russell Catholic High School in Jersey City. Originally from the Dominican Republic. The South Carolina team has a foreign flair to it. Lawson out of Canada. Of course, Mike Kotsar out of Estonia. And when you're struggling shooting the ball from the field and then you go to the line, and as a team, you're shooting 61%. Yeah, dead last in the SEC. I mean, it, it's just one mental hurdle to clear after another. Frank, who played uh, in 24 games last year as a freshman. A lane violation on Kentucky. So a reprieve here. Sestina called for coming in early. Well, Sestina thought McCreary was ahead of him. McCreary went in quickly. Mm -hmm. Sestina had to get there to block him out. That so was his argument. See if the third time is a charm. It is for Frank. Remember the old, 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 old NBAs when they had three? Three to make three two. Three to make two. It's before my time, but I've watched uh, the old classic games yeah. on Sunbolt. They do some of that kind of stuff in the G League. You I hate to say, I think I was in the league uh, the last year they did that. Is that that right? was a big deal if you missed all three. That never happened. They either. didn't give chicken sandwiches <laughs> like they do today. <laughs> Foul called on the drive by Whitney. You never missed three in a row in no, your life. No, not free throws. No, my lord, they paid me to make free throws. That's why I was paid that to do that. All right, so you, 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 you're. I've known you for a while. You don't boast, okay? I usually boast for you, but you did <laughs> mention a little stat today at shoot around because you haven't shot in a while yeah, a with your years. shoulder. But the yeah. last time you did, how many consecutive free throws? 126. My goodness. At Florida. My goodness. Just messing around. Did, did you change your batteries after you did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to wheel me out. I mean, that is robotic. I remember when Chris Jackson was at LSU, he had ridiculous free throw numbers like that. 27-18, our score. Maxi rifles the wow. pass down low to Whitney. Can't connect on the dunk. Got to finish a terrific pass and a ball fake. Kusnard with a head of steam. Nice pass, but Frick can't handle it. South Carolina, besides the turnovers, they've got to get it to guys that are shooters to take the shots. They've had guys taking shots that really aren't their better shooters. Formula for not making many shots and shooting a low percentage. Under four minutes to play. Nine-point game. Low scoring as we expected. Whitney behind the back, takes it strong, the hoop and the harm. Nice. Roy, the freshman from Chicago. Well, a bit warm outside, but inside it's been a little cooler, especially for the South Carolina end, but Kentucky warming up a bit, stretching this lead to 11. Confident by Big Blue. See you at the half in just a bit. Dari, Shooter, Jimmy Dykes in the house. What? We're going to update He's what's back. going on in Athens, Georgia, Tennessee underway. Auburn, Alabama, big one tonight. We'll look ahead. First half, all cats so far. The great length of Kentucky on defense is holding South Carolina 22% shooting. Who was a witness of those 126 <laughs> free throws by John Sundle? That's I, what I, I want to know. I trust Who saw it? I trust uh, Sunny's word, it. guys. Uh, how could you I, how could you make that up? I, I mean, it's, it's a such a random. Look, I, I think if you're going to question the integrity of John Sunbolt, I've got nothing for So what him. happened was a radio guy challenged me on a Monday that said, if I bet you $100 and I gave you two warm-ups, you couldn't make nine out of ten, 
would you take the bet? Yeah. I said, yeah, I'd take the bet. Right. That's what I got paid to do. Yeah. So I was at Florida, and I thought, I wonder if I could make 9 out of uh -huh. 10. Just kept going in. True story. True story. Yeah. And so you have witnesses. I haven't shot a ball since then. Well, you just got to end you on did. a winning note. That's a, that's a drop yeah, the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah. You drop just walk, mic, off, walk off, never touch it again, and just take up golf the rest Sonny of the way. Sonny Smith uh, rebounded the last, I don't know, 24, 25. Did he really? Because Auburn was coming in. Yeah. I think I was at 90-something. One of the ball boys said, hey, the guy, the old guy out there has a miss for a while. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I'm surrounded by great shooters. You here. We got Bradley and Dykes in studio. That's like a lot of woo pig suey in the studio. It is a ton of pig suey. That's going to be a goal 10. So Kusnard will get credit for another bucket. He's lived up to the billing in a starting role today. This is exactly what Frank Martin wanted and needed. We'll see if somebody else can pick up the slack here. Trey Hannibal on the floor for the first time today for the Gamecocks. A little token three-quarter pressure handled easily by Kentucky. Now dropped to the 2-3 zone. They ran one possession of it, and Kentucky laid it in. We'll see what happens this time. Higgins eyes the shot clock, gets it with seven. Now six, pull-up jumper, foul from behind. An unnecessary foul by Kusnard as he hit him in the head from behind. Gymnastics takes over the SEC Network every Friday night. This week, you got Florida and Missouri squaring off in Columbia at 7 Eastern. Then it's Auburn and LSU from Baton Rouge at the Maravich Center. Friday Night Heights also streaming live on the ESPN app. It, it only goes to show you, as we bragged about Kentucky's free throw shooting this year, <laughs> one of the best marks in the country. They're now 6 for 11, just over 50%. Hagen's first attempt, he barely got it above the rim. Very similar today when they were shooting free throws. His first couple were below the rim, and Cal yelled at me, goes, you know, it's got to be above the rim right. for it to go in. Yes, the rims are 10 feet here in South Carolina as well. Cal making sure the officials, so he's pointing to officials saying that's your call, not the other guy's call, that's your call. Isn't it great when coaches officiate? Now officials have to say, well, wait a second, let us do our job. Yeah, well, that's what Pat Adams is saying right now. Hey, uh, we got it, coach. There's something about this building. <laughs> coach Cal gets a little fiery. He's been ejected twice in this building. And he's been worked up so far in this first half, despite the fact his Wildcats lead by 10. Well, he's prepared. He, see, he told his kids today it's going to mm -hmm. be a physical game. be a lot of contact, yep. a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. How do we handle it? Changing defenses, man-to-man -man defensively. I don't think Kentucky's had any issue trying to get the shots they want to get. Higgins. Now Sestina, straightaway three-pointer off Ooh. the mark. Ooh. T.J. Moss clears it, ahead to Manaya. Strong take to the basket and off the window and in for McCreary. Four points now for the freshman. Pretty strong move, but he comes up limping. See if he's okay, maybe turn an ankle. Left foot, keep an eye on him. You'll see the Gamecocks play 11 guys. Frank not afraid to use his bench, and now that's going to be a backcourt. Over and back for Kentucky. Lawson did not touch it. It'll be Gamecock ball. Did he not touch it? Look close. I, I thought he touched it. I thought he tried to pick it up. I, I might have missed it right I, I, I didn't understand why he was diving for it because at that point, Kentucky can't do anything. Correct. So did he touch it? Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah. Good job of That's why the officials have that shirt on. Under two minutes to go, first half. Quiet half for Lawson. Lawson weaving and draws the foul right on cue, partner. They need him to not be quiet the rest of this game. They need him to be aggressive. That does not mean you have to shoot it, but aggressive moves will free up teammates as long as Lawson is aggressive with the ball. A couple times so far tonight he's been aggressive, 
but he's forced bad shot attempts. He's 0 for 4 from the field, no assists. He's really been playing a lot of two guard this year. I think when many coaches and, and us in the media, you and I have ballots, I, I'll admit I voted A.J. Lawson as part of that all SEC team. I thought he could be one of the better point guards this year. He must, must, must get his swagger back. He plays with little confidence right now. Yep. Go to the bench with those three points. No assist thus far for Lawson. And really, individually, you're the only one that can get that back. Frank Martin's been, you know, they can tell you how right. well to play. Keep going, keep going. But if you're one of the best in the league, you've got to play that way night in, night out. Now, are you like me when you consider everything that's happened for the Gamecocks to only be down seven? They're fortunate. Yeah, surprised. Rebound to get it less. 90 seconds to go, first half. All the way, it's Moss in traffic, gets it to drop, and it's a five-point game. Timeout, Kentucky. How do you want to play when you're South Carolina? It might not be pretty, especially in this building. You hang in with your defense. You make it as tough on Kentucky as you can, and maybe you get some spurts offensively. Right down the pipe, T.J. Moss scored, and... They've had few opportunities, partner, to just push and try to convert. It wasn't an easy bucket, but all of a sudden they're down five. Minute 25 left. Coach Cal gets a timeout, and this gets this crowd, which is a they've been anxious for something to cheer about. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got a great contingent, particularly of the students here, that are ready to explode if Carolina can get something going offensively. Defensively, again, has not been a problem this year. They are sound defensively they force turnovers typically teams do not shoot the basketball very well against Frank Martin's teams particularly when they got into SEC play at some point more shots have got to drop and Frank has kept Coates start with the two fouls he's kept him on the side for the whole half yeah now you'll have a fresh Mike Coates are in the second half Carolina down five points despite shooting 27 percent from the field Full court pressure, three quarter. We'll see if they put more pressure on it or is it just more token just to take time off? Active hands though by Moss. Quickly still only has those three shot attempts. Hagens count the basket plus the foul. Ashton Hagens with a strong move to the hoop. Maybe nobody better at the current time in this league at running that lead spot position and turning the corner and making plays. Hesitation, dribble, then the explosion. Now, that's the third time. First time we saw him kick it to the corner. Right. Second time we saw him on the lob. This time finished it himself. So defensively, who's helping? Who's stopping him? Where are you coming from? He's handled three different types of defenses at him, all in the man-to-man. -man. This is what I love about this Kentucky team going forward. You know when it comes to the NCAA tournament, it's a guards game, yeah. and they got one heck of a trio. On both ends of the floor. Absolutely. Yeah, really good, solid on that defensive end. Manaya, see if his confidence can get going. Still no. It's now 0 for 3. And a couple years ago, that's a shot that Manaya hits. Yeah, he's got to get his confidence back also, offensively. Hagen, stop and go. Blocked by Frank. Good defense. Scooped up by Hannibal. Hannibal gliding into front court, takes it all the way. No, Frank, no. Hannibal gets it back out of bounds to Carolina. Fortunate call for South Carolina. I thought it went off his knee. Thought Whitney had an active hand. They'll maintain possession. Course, final two minutes of the second half. That'll be a reviewable play on and out of bounds, but not in the first half. And now that's a scary sight for any Kentucky fan. Ashton Hagens holding what looks to be a, a wrist or a hand. Or just below the belt. Might need a break. Well, when you put it that way, now I'm wincing in pain. Yeah. He's doubled over right now, trying to catch his breath, and Dr. Sunvold might have diagnosed that one properly. So, Mike, when you talk about this guard play, yes, and here's here's Hagen's going to the offensive end.
Not sure when anything happened. But you talk about Kentucky, the guard play. What, what makes you even better out front defensively is when you've got length behind you that can guard the rim. Yeah. I mean, it really makes you, especially the guys they have. When, when we talk about Hagens, we know how good he is. We've already mentioned how great quickly he is defensively on the ball. You take Maxie the same way. It gives you the green light to be even better out front because the length behind you can stop a lot of any of mistakes. Well, you've got some great rim protectors. Nick Richardson, Nick Richards rather, leading the way there. Sestina, hand in the face on Frank. Can't get it to drop. Shot clock off. We'll see if Kentucky goes for the final shot. And looks like they will. Maxi. To Sestina. Into the corner. Whitney on a three. Tough rebound in traffic by Hannibal. One second left. Moss has got to shoot it. Did not see the clock. And that is how the first half will come to a close. Kentucky 33, Carolina 25 as we send it to studio. Beautiful weather in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. Not a beautiful first half offensively. Gamecocks hanging around, though, 33-25, our halftime score. Mike Morgan alongside John Sunvold. And, John, we know I mean, if, if the Gamecocks are going to pull off an upset, it's got to be a low-scoring game, sometimes yeah. a little bit on the ugly side. If Kentucky is going to keep doing what they do, Ashton Hagens gets it all started with his terrific pass. You know, there's only been one team that has shot 50% so far against South Carolina this year, and it's been Houston. And right now, Kentucky's at 43. They've got a chance, and Ashton Hagens has been terrific. On both ends of the floor, whether it's defensively, he's only one of five from the field, but it's his assist. He's got five assists. He's done everything that he needs to do offensively, especially in the half-court sets, to get Kentucky some somewhat easy baskets. We'll see if they push the ball any tempo this second half. South Carolina does a nice job getting back defensively. Uh, you take a look at the stats, South Carolina got to find a way to score. If they don't, uh, it's going to be a struggle because Kentucky – Somehow, because of their guards are so good, they don't turn it over much, they can control the pace of play. They certainly can, and you look at it from a Carolina standpoint, you shoot 24% from the field, your best player, Mike Coatsar, plays all at three minutes, and you're only down eight, so there's there's some light at the end of the tunnel. If you can get everything going, get some shots to drop, Bastion Hagens, even if he's not getting shots to drop, he's still dropping off assists left and right. The SEC's assist leader, leader with five in the first half. Yeah, and we mentioned Coates are at the top of the show. He's had two ball games SEC play, one with 17, one with 18. So you take a look and say, okay, he, he, he played three minutes in the first half. He's not a guy that goes and searches for his bucket so Right. They got to come to him. Kentucky, Brooks on a jumper. Gamecocks will live with that shot. Carolina shot just 24% in. Half number one, we'll see if they can improve here. Kusnard, Kusnard continues to be aggressive, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Solid first half, now he had nine points. He took 11 shots, so he wasn't bashful. He was three of 11 in the first half, but if you're on that Gamecock sideline, you don't need anybody to be bashful. You need the guys to be aggressive, to take it. A little contact, you see his strong upper body. List him at 6'4", nearly 215 pounds. That's some shoulders right there. Remember, he's only played 15 games. He's still kind of learning his way out there, but a lot of potential for Jermaine Kusnard. A six-point game. And then a steal by Kusnard. Into the hands of Lawson, ahead to Bryant. Look out! Hammered by Richards. If you had to have a start to the second half, this is what South Carolina needed. You get one bucket, you get a steal, you get a chance for two free throws here. And you draw the third foul on Richards. Yeah. And we'll see how Coach Cal handles that situation. A clean steal from Kusnard out of Hagen's hands. Another miss at the free throw line. It's anguishing. I mean, when you watch somebody like a Bryant, the free throw, he, he just doesn't look comfortable, John. You see the anguish in his face. 
Does get one to drop, though. Athletic, but not a, a, a pretty shooter at all, whether it's free throw line. We talked about his three-point lack of shooting ability deep. A little more activeness by South Carolina on the defensive end. They must take Kentucky out of any comfort zone that they run, just run an offense. Wildcats have been able to throw it where they want to throw it in the first half, move where they wanted to move. Already we've had activity, one steal, and there was a deflection. Suffocating defense here in the early going of the second half for Frank Martin and company. Shot clock at seven. Maxi. Lawson held him with five on the shot clock. Good matchup, Maxey being guarded by Lawson. Two guys. There's some NBA scouts in the stands. We saw him yeah. today at shoot around, but those are two guys that they're looking at. It's nice uh, for scouts to see two guys that match up against each other. There's some scouts or some uh, draft boards, I should say, that have Tyrese Maxey as a top 10 pick. Hagens on a blow by. Tries to drop it off to Richards. Picked up by Quickly. Boy, nice play by runner. Quickly. Quickly saved a play. And then Quickly almost a steal. So Quickly saves a turnover, turns a turnover into a bucket, and then he's a one-man press. That ball is going to be a turnover. Quickly takes it, gets a bucket, and then when they're going to end, South Carolina is going to inbound it, he was a one-man press. Knocked it into the uh, hands of Kusnard out of bounds. Well, it's from the Louisville game on, Emmanuel quickly is playing as well as any guard in this league. Yeah. Maxi hits the deck, and he'll go to the line for a pair and see if he's okay. Well, third personal foul on Kotsart. Coming down the lane, Kotsart tried to help out. Got the bump, Look, probably to the thigh. Yeah. Turns a corner and Coatsart gets there late and the knee to the thigh. Oh, that hurts. Now, what do you think? If you're Frank Martin, do you roll the dice and keep him in there? I think he's taking him out. He's got a guy. Now he's got T.J. Moss. Now he may be taking out. Uh, we'll see if he takes out a guard to beat him off the dribble. Yeah. He's taking out Brian. I, I mean, I almost think you have to. You have to gamble a bit because I don't know if they can generate enough offense without Coatsar on the floor. Yeah, I'd leave him to see if he gets going in the game. He's not played. Right, he's played three minutes in the first half. He does you no good if he's sitting on the side. He can sit on the side when he gets five. And then Sestina grabs an offensive rebound off the free throw miss. Now let's see if Kentucky goes at Coatsar in any way. Try to, try, try to feed it inside, see if they pick up his fourth. We got Richards on the bench for Kentucky with three fouls. Coats are guarding Montgomery. Meanwhile, quickly on another three. My goodness, is there any shooter in America hotter than Emmanuel Quickly? He has now hit 13 out of 14 three-pointers. It has become nearly automatic for number five in blue. Emmanuel quickly, they're going to give him a two instead of a three, but the key part, Mike, is he moves so well without the ball. So he's got the ball up top, but watch his movement. As he knows his guy's going baseline, Maxi, he, he flattens out, so he's open. He did it in the first half, now in the second. You take a look at his foot. It's easy call for the officials to give him a two. Two or three to us, it doesn't matter. He's only missed one shot in this ball game. He's four of five from the field. Yeah. Perfect two of two beyond the three-point line. The only thing they've not done well enough is get him more shots. Well, and it was it was kind of an uneven season for Emmanuel quickly last year as a freshman. He really has worked hard to improve his game, be more consistent. You know, some Kentucky fans have asked back in Lexington, well, why is he not starting every game? Bottom line is he's had games where he's come in and they never take him back out. So he's logging minutes. He's certainly getting the crucial minutes for Kentucky, and he's been playing outstanding. And John Calipari has said the fact when they had break, winter break net practices, he was in the gym all the time. Reminded him of Tyler Hero and all the shot attempts that he would get up after practice, before practice, spending time perfecting his craft. And again, they had some struggles early in the season shooting the basketball. And, and John Calipari kept saying, we're a better shooting team. 
and eventually we will. And a tremendous young man if you get a chance to chat with Emmanuel as we have. Just can't won't find a more likable kid. Plays the saxophone and the drums. Good student, great player, great teammate. Kusnard still feeling it. And Coach Sard no longer in the lineup. Maxi finds quickly. Kick out past Sestina on a three. Perfect offense for Kentucky. So let's go. How about unselfish by quickly? Shooting the ball well. Right. Had a look. Gave a little pump fake, put it on the floor, got an assist to a teammate. Sestina now shooting the basketball well. Nice play that time. Kusnard finds McCreary streaking along the baseline. McCreary has six. The value of having three guys out front, as Kentucky does, we know defense will be able to offensively. Three guys that can handle the ball, that can put it on the floor, that can shoot it, that can create. Now here's quickly trail on the play. And remember, he could shoot it there, he could shoot it there. Easy pass to Stina, that's his second three tonight. Wouldn't you say in a lot of ways the three guards for Kentucky, they're all combo guards. They can all play the point Correct. and the two. Yeah. And that's why it's easy to interchange. Right. No matter who has the ball, the other two can run. One gets in foul trouble, they've got room for the other. I mean, how many teams in the country have three elite guards that can all play the one and the two? Uh, that is a rare luxury that Coach Cal has this year. And very often you'll see all three on the floor at the same time, as you have right now. Maxi to Montgomery, and then back to Maxi on the return. Running hook shot plus the foul for Montgomery. And I think the trademark, Mike, for Coach Cal's teams at Kentucky has been unselfish play. So night in, night out, you're going to have a different player lead this team in scoring. It doesn't have to be the same guy every night. And they're okay with that. So we've seen the outside game. Now we see a little bit of the inside game. Montgomery, everything that they've done outside has opened it up. The lanes are open to drive it, to finish. Fourth foul on McCreary. Meanwhile, Montgomery, who was such a great playmaker in high school, they don't need him to be an elite scorer for this Kentucky team. Just kind of stuff the stat sheet. Eight points, eight rebounds. That's going to be a good night for him with this Kentucky squad. Keep an eye on quickly how good he is defensively on the ball. Tough shot by T.J. Moss. Degree of difficulty, tough. Got it to go, hampered by an ankle injury last year. Redshirt freshman. Yeah, Gamecocks trying to find anything they can on the offensive end, but they're not getting anything when they run their offense. Gamecocks could use some stops right about now. And that's not going to get it done. Another foul as quickly takes it to the basket. And you send one of the top free throw shooters in the country to the line. He, he's not bad, Nine, uh, 94%, 50 out of 53. Fifth That's best, amazing. yeah, fifth best mark in the country. Nearly automatic is Emmanuel quickly. And you think, well, who leads it? Joseph Girard out of Syracuse at 96%. And, of course, the moment we say that, front rim. Watch his eyes on the free throw line. Stares down the second one through the net. And it's a 13 point cushion for Kentucky. The largest lead has been 14. Kusnar, rifle pass down low and a foul called. On Montgomery, 15-49 to play. The Kentucky lead swells to 13. We've talked about the elevated play of Emmanuel quickly, and so far, Johnny is not disappointed. Not disappointed. Uh, solid on the offensive end, just knocking shot in after shot. Patient, not forcing anything, but uh, saving certain plays, kicking the teammates, solid defensively, and... Uh, Absolutely feels like he can't miss when he shoots it from outside.
former McDonald's All-American who won the three-point contest during that time. But again, last year, I don't think we saw as good a shooter as he actually is. As Coach Cal talks about all the time, when you're a sophomore, you're not thinking as much. You're letting the game come to you, and he's playing as loose as you possibly can. Yeah, and he's got good teammates. Uh, he doesn't have to handle the ball as much, obviously. So he can play off of a guy like Hagens or Maxey, spot up, find some openings. There's not pressure on him trying to make all the plays. I think when you come in as a freshman at Kentucky or wherever you go, if you're highly recruited, the McDonald's All-American and all those things, you kind of think that you'll just automatically come in and the game will be easy, but it's difficult. It's hard to be good. Every level you go up, there's a degree of difficulty and many find that uh, it's not anything what they thought it would be. Gamecocks continue to be baffled at the free throw line. Now six of 14. A real tough to beat Kentucky when you're missing shots at the line. Struggling, really shooting the basketball in you, general. You, well, you can't win on the road if you miss free throws. You might get away with it at home. Almost a good finish by Montgomery. Don't forget on Tuesday, Mike White and the Florida Gators travel to Baton Rouge to take on Will Wade's LSU Tigers. That's Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on the SEC Network. And while we have a moment, congratulations to LSU on another convincing win, a national title, and I dare say one of the best seasons in the history of college football, 15-0. They beat a half dozen top 10 teams in the country, and they blew away most of the competition in the process. Yeah, down the stretch, their average uh, win was nearly 20 points a ball yeah. game over, over the big boys, and uh, quite impressive. And I can tell you around here, not many fans were disappointed to see Clemson lose that game. <laughs> you know, flying in, I uh, saw a lot of Clemson fans. Mm -hmm. They made their way to New Orleans. Yeah. They're making their way back in this area. I think they were uh, uh, realistic about all of it, too, that LSU was a great, great team. No doubt. And Clemson will be back next season. 12-point lead for Kentucky. Coats are back in the game with those three fouls. This is Bryant. To Moss, seven on the shot clock. Moss thought about it, then launched a three. It's been solid. Good minutes off the bench. How can the Gamecocks get a stop? And what's tough, if you can't stay in front of the guy with the ball out top, you're going to be in trouble. And Hagen's kind of baited, was it Moss on him defensively, and just exploded. And once you get past the first guy, it's trouble. Yeah, and if you're Mike Coatsar, you, you almost want to let that one go because you can't afford to pick up your fourth foul this early in the game. I mean, and now you're really behind the eight ball if you're Frank Martin. You got over 14 minutes left. Your top offensive player, defensive player, rebounder is going to spend a lot of time on the bench. You know, he's really not played. He's played five minutes. Frank Martin disappointed, not happy with two things. One, the call, two, the player. And Coach Arts disappointed. Senior season, you got Kentucky at home. Inside, Manaya. Why, well, it's a good pass. Terrific pass, maybe even a better catch. Because Maxi was right there almost to look like he could get a steal. Manaya with a catch. Maybe that gets Manaya going. Frank threading the needle. Inside Richards left alone. How good is Hagens? Again, off the bounce, patient, doesn't rush. Waits for his guy to roll, waits for his guy to be open. And then puts a pass right on the money. A half dozen assists now for Hagens, who averages over seven a game. So Hagens is going to be patient right here. Now you're going to wait for the roll. A lot of guys would say, well, the roll's not there right away, and let's kick it. 
He waited, waited till Richards got open. This game is going to test the patience of the man on the left of your screen, Frank Martin. Bryant, offensive. It's just a different looking offense without Mike Kotsar on the floor. Even when Mike Kotsar is not shooting, he's setting screens, he's rolling to the basket. It, it's just a different look. He creates movement because of what you just said. Set screens, he, he picks and pops, he picks and rolls. So all that movement makes the defense adjust because of where he is. South Carolina does not have great outside shooters. So a defense doesn't chase guys. Right. So the lane is more congested. So that time Bryant put it on the floor, there's congestion. Allows the defense to take a charge. Shooters stretch out a defense. They make the offense wider. Look where Kentucky plays from. They got some shooters in a variety of places. Traveling on Keon Brooks. Brooks has really struggled to get into a flow in this game and for much of the season. Again, Cal has talked about the fact that Keon Brooks Khalil Whitney, those are two guys they're going to need to improve as the season moves along. Tough shot, and Bryant off the trampoline on the follow. Oh, my goodness. Keyshawn Bryant hanging in the air and dropping the hammer. Wow. That's what he does. Woo. Richards walks. Watch the elevation here. From the baseline, almost above the backboard. Hmm. Oh. We'll see if that'll spark Carolina offensively down by nine. And that might be why the scouting report says put a body on Bryant. Yes. He's coming from all angles. Moss to Bryant. Takes it strong. And a rebound. Stepping on the sideline is Whitney. I think that might have been Kentucky's ball. I thought it was. I didn't yeah. think Whitney really needed to try and save it. Man, it looked like Frank just kind of volleyballed it, like a spike toward the sideline. Whitney bailed him out, though. No change of shot clock. We're down to six. This is where you would think A.J. Lawson takes over, right? Late clock situation. Yeah, but I think it's been Moss so far this game. It is going to be Moss here. Throws it up there. Back iron. Kentucky in transition. Numbers. Maxi blocked by Manaya Richards on the follow. Richards is unbelievable as a big man. Runs the floor 6-11. You trail it in case you don't convert. And he got the tip in. 13 points for Richards. Manaya can't get the tap in. First guy down the floor is Richards. He can't stay with him. He runs so well. Richards guarded by Frink. Nice pass. Montgomery fouled by Frink. We and now have Kentucky with more movement, more aggressive cuts. The other Wildcats, they turn it up a notch defensively just when South Carolina gets close. And the Gamecocks keep climbing their way up at the Wildcats. They have answers. Richards with a follow-up. Eleven forty-one to play here in Columbia. It's Kentucky on top of Carolina, 52-41. to Time now for the mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate. And no matter what angle you look at it, it's awfully impressive when you see a guy with a 40-inch vertical catch it, time it perfectly on a follow-up slam. And gives the rim a workout in the process. He's got a couple of them so far. Keyshawn Bryant, one of the high risers 
in the SEC, the sophomore from Winter Haven, Florida. Now the highlights have been strong for this Gamecock offense. Now they need to be a little more efficient. Yeah, let's let's see. A, a, there's two things. You got to get a stops now against Kentucky. You got to get stops, and then offensively, can they get movement? And Brian, a guy that plays uh, really on pogo sticks, uh, above and beyond the rim. Sophomore season last year had 14 double-digit scoring games. Capable jump shots, not great from the outside, but good enough to be able to uh, you know make a defense honorable. Yeah, he's uh, sitting right next to the man who's going to be on the bench for quite some time, which is bad news for this Gamecock squad. Mike Coates are four fouls. And, and Mike, you, all, you wonder, can, can the Gamecocks change the pace of this game, right? Kentucky has settled in, they're comfortable. Double digit lead, was scared once, but not that much. They answered with a couple quick buckets. Now you're back up 13 in South Carolina. Can they get answers and then they get to get stops? Do you take chances by pressing, overplaying passing lanes? We'll see what happens. Kentucky just made its 15th free throw of the night. Carolina's attempted 14, but they get a three, and what a world of confidence that might be for Justin Manaya. Boy, good to see. Only shooting 20% beyond the three-point line this season. A big part of their offensive piece that's not been there this year. And then a turnover on Hagens. One of the few mistakes he has made in this game. Ten-point game. See what they go back to. Manai up top just hit a three. You got a double screen up top. Pick and pop. Kosnard! Count the basket plus the foul. That ball above the square and through the hoop. Frank Martin was wondering, can I find a guard that can take the toughness of his coaching and respond? And he thought Kosnard could. He has responded tonight. These are the kind of shots we thought we'd see from A.J. Lawson, but it's been Jermaine Kusnard who drew the start tonight. Very aggressive and providing plenty of offense. 14 points now for the redshirt freshman. Hagen's another turnover. He traveled back-to-back -back turnovers by the ordinarily reliable Ashton Hagen's. He almost looked like he was going to try to turn the corner and go all the way. <laughs> Pat Adams saying, you're, you're going to need to back up a few feet, Coach. <laughs> that incredulous look <laughs> is priceless. <laughs> he already got warned earlier. So a slap on the wrist here. He got warned for chirping earlier. That warning was for more about location. Kusnard unloads a three. And now the crowd will ignite in Columbia. The follow by Johnny Juzang, who had not played a single minute in the last three games. And the Gamecocks had the defense they wanted. Kentucky was scrambling a bit and came away with an easy one underneath. That snaps a 9-0 run by Carolina. Lawson on a three in and out. And then a reach in foul on Hannibal. And that'll send Kentucky to the free throw line. They'll have the benefit of the double bonus the rest of the way. And Lawson can't buy a bucket. And, well, if, and if you can't buy a bucket, then find guys who can make a shot. I mean, it really is. That, that's how cold-hearted this game is. Yeah, you're 0 for 5 from the field. Kusnard, Kusnard is having a just, career night. He had just hit a couple, yeah. right? Manaya had hit one. And again, I get if you're lost and you're trying to get part of it, you had an open look. Meanwhile, you foul this guy, and it's nearly automatic. You see Kentucky. Once again, hitting more free throws than their opponent's attempt. They 
have been able to dominate the free throw line this year. What a quick turnaround that was. Gamecocks had all the momentum, crowd getting into the game. Hannibal out at point. It is a big, or not tall, but solid body thick. Lawson out of control. And a reach-in foul on Juzang. Wow. I thought they would call a jump ball. Out of control, Lawson lost his footing. Ball went down. They called Juzang for a reach over. Here's a trips, falls, and then yeah, that's one of those. It's a rare call, isn't it? Yeah, usually. Usually you'll see an arrow on that one. Pat Adams on the whistle. Good crew tonight. Pat Adams, Michael Roberts, Mike Nance. Manaya. No. Frank. Blocked by Richards. Wow, what a block. How quickly Richards can get off his feet. One of the top rim protectors in the SEC. Waits until the offensive player's already left the ground. Inside, Richards lost it. Hannibal quick hands. I think maybe it's Lawson. Weak side came over. Kusnard. Frank with another offensive rebound. Hannibal. Nice pass to Frank, who's fouled, plus the basket. Well, they keep coming. It may not be pretty. <laughs> but they keep attacking. And they're putting a ton of pressure on this Kentucky defense around the rim. I mentioned Alonzo Frank did not play a single minute against Tennessee. I was asking some people at the program, well, was he hurt at all? No, he just, just didn't play. But he's giving them some good minutes off the bench tonight. And, ha and Hannibal makes a play because when he drives, he knows who's coming. It's Richards, mm -hmm. right? Weak side guy is going to come over and help. Makes a pass. Frank makes a layup. See if he can convert to free throw. How about 17 offensive rebounds for Carolina? And now another foul. And I mean, you just don't need it. Every time you foul, you're sending a good free throw shooter to the line yeah. for two. It's just not necessary. Well, and you can see the reaction of Frank Martin. Play good defense, get your hands off. No need to foul guys 40 feet from the basket. Well, and credit, okay, let's say you're playing pressure type defense. A guy like Hagens is gonna bring the ball into your body. Mm -hmm. You're the defender, I'm gonna continue to kind of go at an angle, seeing if the officials will give you the call. They did, now he misses the first free throw. Sophomore from Cartersville, Georgia. Ashton Hagens gets the friendly bounce on the second. And it's back to a six-point game. Manaya into the corner. Moss finds Lawson. Lawson still looking for his first basket. Richards rejects it. Fans want a goaltending. Hard to tell from our angle. Shot clock at six. Play Man on. Manaya sees it. Manaya drive and kick. Lawson on a pull up jumper. He still can't find it. Oh, wow. They got Hagens. Whoa. Wow, what a tough call. I feel like both coaches are about to have a volcanic eruption. So if you're a guard, and that's a long rebound, I think Hagens was the first one there. Watch the ball come off, and he just goes and gets it. He just goes and gets it. Meanwhile, Frank with four offensive rebounds. Carolina as a team, 18 offensive rebounds. So Frank jumped backwards as Hagens was rebounding that ball. Not a good call. Frank just a 52% free throw shooter. But three of four in this game tonight. Quality minutes off the bench for the sophomore. 
And remember, South Carolina had 25 points only in that first half. And here they are at 55 total. And a whole lot of game to be played and a whole lot of noise being provided here by the Gamecock crowd. High pick and roll, look for quickly in the corner. Oh, just finish it. What a take by Ashton Hagens. And why does it happen on the weak side as quickly? T.J. Moss was going to leave him, then in his mind goes, I can't leave quickly. He doesn't leave him, and Hagens finishes with a flush. That is a big-time drive by the sophomore. And Moss on the other end with a chance at three. We've got offense, partner. Flow. <laughs> We're in favor of it. In Columbia, South Carolina, no less, offense. Hagens with the finish to give Big Blue Nation happiness, but T.J. Moss, the toe raiser, off the glass. Mike Morgan, John Sunvold, back with you in Columbia. 7.46 to play. It's Kentucky on top by four. Gamecocks were really struggling. And then Jermaine Kusnard started to heat up for Carolina. And he's uh, not bashful, right? He hasn't worried about the shot attempts. He's six for 17 from the field. But he has taken it upon himself to create something on the offensive end for this Gamecock squad. And he kept them close enough to where then the teammates start making shots, and we now have a ball game. They're doing all this with Mike Coatsart barely playing. He's been in foul trouble since Jump Street. A.J. Lawson, their talented guard, is 0 for 7 for the field. No assists and two turnovers. They're shooting as a team 34% for the field. But, but this sometimes is how Frank Martin's teams are able to do it, smoke and mirrors. I mean. You can't go by the stat sheet. They can win some games in unorthodox fashion, and that's what they're trying to do here. And the free throw knocked down by Moss to make it a three-point game. That's a career high now for T.J. Moss with 10. You muck it up just enough. You, you stay in this ball game, now defensively. Can you get a stop? Hagens inside Richards, fouled by Hannibal. Well, Hagens just has patience. Picks up his dribble, doesn't have anything, and he waits because of the mismatch for Richards to establish himself against Hannibal down low. You know, as this continues to be a foul fest, there's going to be a lot of guys in foul trouble in the final seven and a half minutes of this game. Richards, a 70% free throw shoot. Kentucky uncharacteristic misses at the line so far tonight. Maybe it's the Betty White sign. One for two. The lead back to four. Hannibal going to run some point for Frank Martin and company here. Lawson at the two. Again, no Mike Coates are down low with four fouls. And on the drive, Bryant draws the foul. You know, Bryant being aggressive, and what, you know, both teams have done is they're going to make the officials make calls, yeah. right? They're going to be aggressive attacking. And so far, the officials almost every possession have blown a whistle. Well, you got each team in the double bonus the rest of the way. Yeah. So you take the one and one off the table. You're going to have a lot of two shot fouls in this game, and it could come down to free throw shooting. If it does, you got the best free throw shooting team in the league in Kentucky, the worst in Carolina. That's the numbers coming in. Carolina so far in the second half, knocking them down. Kentucky's on the road, and Carolina's in their home building. Bryant, short arm that one. One possession game, seven minutes and change to go. Kentucky, one of three unbeaten teams in SEC play. Carolina looking for its first league win of the season. 
Coach Cal wanted to know how his team would respond to a physical game, a tight game. We're going to find out. Juzang, Hannibal, skies for the rebound. Hannibal dribbled it off his leg, out of bounds. He plays downhill, though, doesn't he? He was coming. And Frank Martin is going to make a substitution. That's the thing he has said about Trey Hannibal. There's a lot of good in that body, but there's a lot of unnecessary turnovers, and that was one of them, as Mike Coatsar will check back in with those four fouls. And if you're a South Carolina fan, you think, okay, Coatsar's given us nothing in five minutes yeah. of the whole game. Just been in foul trouble. You got 6.45 left. Can and he give you what he has been playing like all season long? And quickly is back in the game for Kentucky with his four fouls. Hagens, wow, what a move. Can't get it to drop, though. Bryant for the rebound. Hagens would love to have that one back. Boy, made a good fake. Yes, he did. Right in front of the bucket. This crowd will erupt with a hoop here. A three would tie it. Pick and pop for Kotsar. Kusnar oh, finds Bryant on the stuff. What a pass and a great cut by Bryant. Dave Cox have never led this game. This is the closest we've had for a score since two to nothing. Matchup zone defense. Wow, that's deep. Maxi with Whoa. a silencer from way downtown. He has had biggest shots against in the toughest moments this season. Reminds me of the Michigan State game. Yeah, when he, he started. did it again, and he did it against Louisville. Yep. Kusnard on Maxi. Richards erases it. Coatsar gets it. Shot clock down to 11. Bryant gets the bucket and the foul. Coatsar kept it alive for to extend the possession. And Bryant has become the guy who needs to be on the offensive end. Cutting, slashing, finishing, not shooting jump shots. What a pass by TJ Moss. And that is the fourth foul on Hagen. So Hagen's and quickly, each with four fouls for Kentucky. And all of a sudden, Bryant's hitting free throws, and it's a one point game. Look at the foul trouble in this game. Three quarter court pressure. Maxi left alone, can't do that. Maxi's starting to heat up. By impressive. Two in a row from deep. Favoring his left thigh that was kneed by Kotsar early in his second half. Kusnard, he continues his career night, 19 points. Matchup zone defense. Maxi's hit the two deep ones. Quickly works out of the corners. Kusnard, one-on-one. -on -one. Kusnard gets it to go. We're tied. Timeout, Kentucky. Defense can turn into offense. They've been able to get some stops. And when they push, a finish by Kusnard to get it to even. And we're alive in Columbia. Not much. <laughs> Dari, he's been good. So is Isaiah Joe, for that matter, for Arkansas. Fun team to watch. We've got a fun second half. Hey, the first half, let's be honest, it was not an offensive Rembrandt, but all of a sudden, we got even some style points here. 43 points in the second half for Carolina. At 55% off the chart for the Gamecocks. Reminiscent a little bit of how they scored against Virginia, right? Well, it's Up and down the court and made some buckets. Yeah, so they they, they go 55% from the field against UVA on the road, and everybody's high on this team at that point. Then they drop three in a row, and they've shot 38% from the field since, but so far in this second half, everything's dropping for the Gamecocks. They have not been a great jump shooting team, but they've not relied on the jump shot in the second half. They put it more on the floor. They finished around the rim, and guys are using their strengths. 
They're doing all this with zero points from Kotsar and three points from Lawson. If you would have told me that would be the number at this point, I would have said Kentucky in a runaway. And now how does Kentucky get their confidence back in their half-court sets? They have relied a lot on Hagens. Was tripped right there by Lawson. With eight on the shot clock, again, every foul the rest of the way spells two free throws. The only problem I can see in Kentucky's offense is that guys are there's three players standing and watching Hagens play right. at the top with a, with a screen and roll. So you got three guys standing, not enough movement. Wouldn't you want to see more shots from Maxi after he hit those two well, bombs? He hit a couple. Now, he is lingering. That left thigh where he got kneed quickly hasn't had many jump shots either. Still four of five on the game from the field. Hagens calmly knocks down the first. Kentucky back on top. So Kentucky's got to find a way to get a couple stops and not necessarily get a stop and walk it up, but if they can get a stop and a rebound. Remember, early on they were allowed, they pushed the ball, and Nick Richards outran guys on the other end of South Carolina. So if you get a stop, you just don't hold on to it. Push it to see what you have. And the reason you do that against South Carolina is because they are an aggressive offensive rebounding team. So that means they're sending guys. If you get a rebound, you push, you may have an opening on the other end. Meanwhile, if you're Carolina offensively, Kusnard has been the guy. 21 points, a career high in 30 minutes of action. Gets the ball here, gives it off to Hannibal. Up top, Kotsar. Kick out past Manaya. Knocks down the triple, and the Gamecocks have their first lead. Confidence by Manaya. He's hit one out of the left corner. Now out of the right corner. Two, three zones, you've got to have active hands. You can't let Kentucky survey and pass it anywhere they want to. Quickly misses a three, tapped out Manaya on the breakaway. Collects himself and banks it home. How about Manaya's hands, the quickness? Montgomery thought he had it. Manaya quickly knocks it away. Under three to play. Juzang on a three. Boy, that's two quick threes in two possessions, right? One or two passes, and they hoisted it up. And that's not what Cal wants out of his offense. Ashton Hagen's on the bench. The offense looks a lot different without his leadership on the floor. Kusnard left it short. And a rebound, and a jump ball, and the arrow goes to the Gamecocks. Where they've been aggressive in this second half is putting it on the floor. That time it was Kotsar. And if you're aggressive that way, Manaya hits the first one. Now the active hands. Dead sprint, he wins the race, he gathers it. And this building has exploded. And I'll tell you what, if you notice, John Calipari did not waste any time getting Ashton Hagens back on the floor. That run by Carolina happened with him on the bench. Well, the two possessions, uh, a quickly shot it too quickly. Yep. I mean, it was one pass, and he had a guy on his face, and it was Jujang who just simply hoisted one pass against the zone, not going to get it done on the road. Two and a half to play. Lawson on the crossover. Lawson gets it to go! The screen by Mike Kotsar. Offensive interference, he simply put a screen out front and Lawson turned the corner and got it to the bucket. It took A.J. Lawson nearly 38 minutes. He just got his first field goal. And look what Kotsar did. He not only took out Kotsar, he took out Richards with it. Largest lead for Carolina. Be, act be active with your hands defensively. Hagens. Can't get it to go, but then the follow and a foul. Kentucky will head back to the free throw line. And that's on Manaya, and that is his fourth. We're going to start seeing some guys fouling out here soon with 2.16 to play. And they got Manaya on the rebound. Richards being very active around the rim. You got to put a body on him. Nobody did. 
goes to the foul line. Richards, a much improved free throw shooter. Four for six tonight. Can't get that one to drop. Came out a little fast. Took the bounce, all of a sudden it was gone, right? Right. See if he takes it. You got to lock it. You got to lock in on a free throw, just like today when they were working on free throws. Lock in, take your time, same release. And that's what he did on the second. Much better. Four Much better point rhythm. Game. Now, what do you do, South Carolina? You keep attacking. You play downhill. John Calipari changing up, 2-3 zone defense. Watch for Manaya. He's hit one out of each of the corners. Got Kusnard on the wing, gets the ball here. All that I'm saying is manaya has got to feel comfortable with his jump shot. Hancock's almost threw it away. Saved a turnover. Eight to shoot. Kusnard in. into Kotsar. Oh, wow. Lawson on a three. Manaya flying in for the rebound and is fouled. Justin Manaya. The game they've been waiting on from him all year long. And the fifth foul on Montgomery. You know, Coatsart caught it, and he kicked it out to Lawson. And he could have gone right back to Manaya in the corner. But Manaya was open. <clears throat> there was not a defender in the path of Manaya to get an offensive rebound. And you said it, Mike. This is the game maybe Manaya Gets on track, right? Just yeah. gets going. Yeah, you know, he got hurt last year, and yeah. it just you don't see that confidence that you saw two years ago this year. Uh, this game, I think, would go a long way for him. He's got 10 points, five rebounds, make it 11. Well, he was a, a star in the making that freshman season. And maybe he gets that back. It's uh, all confidence. Kentucky has not hit a field goal in the last three and a half minutes. And the guy who hit the two bombs were Maxi. Been quiet. Do you like the zone? Yeah, the zone's been terrific. Hagens blocked at the rim. Clean block. I think Kotsar got it. Hagens at 6'3 tried to go over the top of Kotsar at 6'11 and Manai at 6'6. Doesn't happen. Five point lead in the ball. We are nearing the one minute mark. Again, Bryant on an outside shooter, more at the rim. Kusnard, foul on the floor, but that's still going to be two shots. So watch when Hagens puts it on the floor. Going to try to finish over two guys, try to get contact. Didn't get it. And the news is even worse on the other end. Ashton Hagens just fouled out. That is huge for Kentucky offensively. And they have not looked the same when he's not on the floor. Well, we told you attrition would be a factor here in the final minutes. Hagens has fouled out. Montgomery has fouled out. Quickly has four fouls. Kotsar has managed to hang around with his four fouls. The Vanderbilt Arkansas game incidentally those of you waiting on that you can catch the start of that on the SEC alternate network as soon as we're done here. We will take you to Fayetteville. In the meantime, Gamecocks trying to pull off the upset against 10th-ranked Kentucky. And here's where you got to be great if you want to win. you got to make free throws down the stretch. John, there are a lot of numbers that are staggering in this second half. That is the 52nd point for this Gamecock offense, which <laughs> couldn't buy anything on offense in the first half. And they've been making free throws, right? They're in their home building. They've been confident. Six-point game under a minute to play. And, Mike, they've been able to get stops on the defensive end. No need to foul if you're Carolina, and sure enough, they do, plus the bucket for quickly. And Coatsart picks up his fifth personal foul. They've been sitting in that zone that has protected him. You, you he's, just, he's late to get there. To, really, he's trying to get away. I mean, now you make it a one-possession game by fouling one of the top free throw shooters in the country. Yeah, trying to get away, but quickly too smart, goes right to the body. This game is far from over. Quickly, 16th point of the night for the sophomore. Now does the pressure start to get to this Gamecock team? 
A little full court pressure shown by Kentucky. Well, so far for the Gamecocks, Kusnard has been the guy that has not backed down and backed away. Trouble. Pass to Kusnard. Kusnard dumps it off. Shot missed by Bryant. Kentucky can tie it with a three. Got numbers. Quickly rise and fire. Left it short. Follow. No. Another follow. No. Tapped around and hauled in by Carolina. Shot clock is off. And a foul called. Keon Brooks had attempts. Watch quickly. This would have tied it up. One tip. Another tip. Uh, point blank. Couldn't get it. Kusnard flat-footed falls in his lap. And as good as quickly has been, you got to be good with that shot. I mean, that's an open three. Open three and probably the best look he was going to get. Yep. Even though it was early, he's been shooting it extremely well. Missed it. Two possession game, 25 seconds left, and a timeout on the floor. Oh, you're Frank Barton and company. What are you telling the troops right now? Well, what you're telling, you're going to go back defensively. You're not even talking about the free throw. You're going to assume you're going to make it. Right? Kustar's going to knock this one in. We're going to go back defensively. Now, will they change? Will, will they change out of that zone that, that uh, Coach Sar's out? Because they protected him with that. But they should stay with it because they've been successful at it. And if you're Kentucky, you push the tempo, you push the ball. You don't have to have a three. You can attack and make it a free throw shooting game. Attack the rim. Now you think about what this game would mean for Carolina. I mean, we talked about it. I mean, this is a team that lost to Stetson a couple weeks ago. You lose your first two games in conference play to Florida. One point heartbreaker at Tennessee. And, and you're down for much of the game against Kentucky in the first half. Nothing is going right. Mike Coatsar gets into foul trouble early on. He's a non-factor, right? A.J. Lawson can't buy a bucket. Kentucky's getting into a rhythm. You're thinking, okay, this could be a laugher. Yep. Now all of a sudden, you're Carolina, and you got a chance to get a signature win. It, it almost, it, it's not that it was a laugher, but Kentucky had total control. Right. And South Carolina became much more aggressive offensively, not relying on jump shots, right? Attacking, and they put pressure on this Kentucky team defensively. South Carolina got to the rim. Then all of a sudden they started making a few more shots. Manaya hit some jump shots. And Kentucky could not get away from it. They could not protect the paint area. Couldn't keep South Carolina off that dribble. Only one of two again. Another miss at the line. Still a two possession game. Quickly on a blow by. Draws the foul. Kentucky wants a goal 10. Don't think they're gonna get it. Smart play, playing downhill. And that's Manaya's fifth, so the casualties continue. That's the third player to foul out of this game. Two for Kentucky, one for Carolina. Great free throw shooter on the line. Allows, you expect him to make, allow you to set up pressure. You can go for steals. And then you can foul. Remember, Kusnard has only made two of his last four attempts. So if you're a player, you think of that if you, you're a defensive player. Absolutely. Each team with timeouts in the back park pocket, Gamecocks with one, Wildcats with two. And we see one called here. Nope, substitutions, but no timeout. Let's see how the Gamecocks handle the pressure here. Lawson on the inbounds. I don't expect a foul right away. Well, he did. Well, I thought he grabbed it. And Lawson draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line, and he has actually been their most reliable free throw shooter this year. It looked like, didn't it look like Brooks grabbed Kusnard right away? I, I thought so. And, and from a numbers standpoint, that would be a better guy to foul than A.J. Lawson. Because while Lawson has struggled one for nine from the field, he is their best free throw shooter. That's what you're looking at right there, yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of those where you're frustrated because clearly the strategy there is to foul. Yeah. And you're doing it in daylight, broad daylight, but you can't get the whistle. 
And when you don't want a whistle, you get a whistle. Sometimes that's just the way it works as Lawson misses the first. So at best, this is going to be a three-point game. Then the question becomes, do you foul? And when? I, I, there, well, there's too much time now right. to foul. I, I think Kentucky plays downhill and plays to the rim. Now Lawson's got to suck it up and make this free throw. Missed them both. Two would tie, three would win. Here we go. Quickly. Timeout, Kentucky. 11.3 on the clock. Wow. Free throw line. Isn't it amazing? At home. At home. In your own building. Now, you know, it's 15 games in. You kind of are what you are, right? We mentioned the free throw numbers at the top. Yeah. It, you're shooting 61% as a team all year long. Eventually. You're going you're gonna to look like a 61% free throw shooting team. And in this case, even worse, 53 today for the Gamecocks. So let's see where John Calipari goes. Obviously, Higgins has fouled out of the game, and he's the guy that's come off the pick and roll with the ball. So you've got quickly the last three times down. He's the one that's had the ball in his hands. If they play that direction, remember the guy who's hit the two jump shots from outside when the moves have been made, and that's been Maxi. Yep. He's got the thigh bruise. He's stiff a little bit on the left thigh. But he can catch and he can release. Don't need a three. I'm just saying if if the corner is turned by quickly, expect Maxi to be opposite side. If they come down the right side, expect him to be in left corner. Do you like the strategy of calling a timeout there? A lot of coaches will let him play, hoping you catch yeah, the defense. Yeah, because there's a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time. Most coaches will let him play if you got seven, six seconds. Right. If there's a loose ball and you're going. Right. If if and it was a missed free throw. If it had been different, if the teams if they wouldn't have been back, if it had been a rebound differently, maybe you let him go. They want their set. The other guy that can shoot it who's not scored is Juzang. Zane came to Kentucky as a three-point specialist. They thought he could really provide some scoring from outside. And it's usually those are the guys that are open. Juzang, Sestina. I expect him to be hitting the boards. I expect Richards to be on the screen and roll. He'll want to play the ball up high for a lot. Lawson on quickly. Quickly. Probing. Quickly. Firing quickly knocks it down what a with shot. four seconds to go. Great step back out, a lot of time, plenty of time to push. Kusnard with one, pull up three, good if it goes. He got it, he got it, he got it. Carolina wins. Unreal shot by Jermaine Kusnard. Martin said today he wanted a guard to step up and lead his team. He told us Jermaine Kosnard could be the guy. Four seconds was a lot of time. Watch this step back. Impressive move, better shot from quickly, but they have plenty of time. And Kosnard simply pushed. And it wasn't an impossible shot right on the money. All glass window, my friend. Could you ask for a better second half? Could you ask for a better final 10 seconds? And maybe South Carolina found themselves a guard that Frank Martin can rely on and lead this team. 26 points for the red shirt freshman, Jermaine Kusnard. 17 in the second half. He got the start tonight. Frank had a feeling he was ready, and boy, did he come through. What a ball game. Second half phenomenal. Incredible finish. Gamecocks couldn't get much of anything to drop in the first half. They explode offensively in the second half. 56 points. Our player of the game brought to you by Zaxby's. Who else? Jermaine Kusnard with the 26 points and the buzzer beater off the window from deep downtown. What a finish to an incredible game. 81-78, your final. Kentucky no longer undefeated. Gamecocks get their first conference win of the year. That's what this league's all about. Yep. You can't find an easy game any night, any place. You don't know when they'll respond. 
Frank Martin needed a response from his team. It was 0-2 today.